Welcome to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and today we are going to be changing our keyboard shortcuts so that we can optimize our video editing workflow to make it super fast. Now, the very first thing I want to say is that if you are looking for a very short, quick video, check out my quick tip video that I did on this. I'll leave a link to it in a card, you know, in the description, you know, the rigmarole. But this is not that quick video. This is going to be a very detailed video. I'm going to go over the default Blender shortcuts as well as the shortcuts that I use in order to optimize it the, the fastest way. And in order to do that, we have to go over a lot of stuff. So I'm going to be going slow. I'm going to be taking my time, but it's going to be jam packed with information that I think that you will really like. But if that's not your style, that's okay. You don't have to stay stick around and watch it. But you also don't have to leave me a comment saying how long the video is. And if you do, I can't promise I won't make fun of you. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, uh, I do apologize about my eyes. Uh, I probably look really haggard right now. I get really bad spring allergies, and so my eyes are all puffy now. So I apologize for that. But talking about shortcuts today, I'm using Blender 2.92, the new release that just came out. And um, I do have to warn you that Blender is actually in the process of changing and revamping their shortcuts uh, all across the board, I think, or maybe it's just for the VSE. Anyway, they're trying to make it more consistent. So just keep that in mind throughout the video. It's not really going to make that much difference, though, because um, at least for my workflow, I have a pretty set key map that I use. Uh, but before we get into my key map, let me show you what the Blender defaults are and what you would normally do as you edit video in Blender. So we've got the VSE pulled up here. You should see something that looks like this when you first start it up. Now I have this extra window here with my bubble head and my screencast key so you can see what I'm clicking and all that good stuff. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is come to the overlays, go to waveform display and turn waveforms on. And then that will show your waveforms and your audio. If you don't see your waveforms, what uh, something that you can do, cause this is a little bit of a bug in the Blender VSE, save your blend file real quick and then come up here to file, open recent, and then open the very one you just saved, the one you're on. And that will refresh it, and then you should see those audio waveforms. But we've got them here, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Now this isn't a video editing tutorial. This is more for people who are already using v Blender to edit their videos and want to do it faster and more efficient. And speaking of more efficient, here's a pro tip. This is how I record when you're recording. You can see these spikes here. These spikes are me clapping. Two, one. And I clap like that for this very reason where I can see the spikes. And that means I'm going to either cut before or after that uh, that section out. So to do that, what I'm going to do is come over to the beginning of the claps here, select my strips by clicking and dragging both of them, and then I'm going to press K. And after I press K, I can select this handle and then shift select this handle. Or to make it easier, I can just click out. If you click out anywhere on an empty space, it will deselect. So if I hold control and then click either one of these here, you can see it selects both of them. And that works the same too with the strips. If I click one with holding control, it will click the other one as long as they're all on the same exact frame number. So the handles at the ends are on the same frame number and then these are the exact same length. This doesn't work if I move this in and if I control click nothing happens here because they're not the same length and same thing with the handles they're not on the same frame so bringing them back to the same frame control click now both of them are selected and so I'll show you the first way that you can do this you can press G to grab and move it to where you want it and then you move the playhead again, and then let's go to our next cut. Make sure your mouse is on the right of the playhead. If it's on the left, and then I press K to cut or split the strips, but uh, it's gonna select the ones on the left. So I'm gonna undo that. Make sure your mouse is on the right, K, and then it will automatically select these. So I don't have to select them again, which is really nice. So then I press G to grab and then just, I'm just, placing these arbitrary now. I'm not actually doing any sort of proper video editing. I'm just showing you how uh, you can go about the workflow. Okay, I'm gonna cut uh, K and then G to grab and then move that. K, G to grab, move that. And then maybe select those, G to grab like that. Okay, so that's one way. Um, I'm going to just select these, delete those. 
um, control select those alt o to clear that offset so back to the original length here and let's go back again so we can do the same exact thing um, but i think this is a little bit better because it's more precise so let's cut that again and then I, i'm gonna say cut because that's what you're doing you're cutting the strips but it's technically split and that's just because of the confusion of if you control x to cut and paste just like almost every other program so they call it split now anyway what you can do is drag the playhead so you can see the see if i press g to grab um, that's fine but you can see that the handle kind of covers up some of that waveform so if i do that and i'm trying to be really precise you can't really see that very well g works well if you're not trying to be uh, precise but this i can get real close here and i see exactly where i am and then what i can do is shift s shift s snaps that there and then that's what i'll keep doing so we'll cut this here and then shift s cut or split and then drag that again shift s drag that here cut drag it again and shift s and select these shift s okay and then what you can do is come here i don't want these in the beginning just delete those uh shift left arrow will take you all the way back to the beginning and then you can hit the backspace key to clear all of those gaps and then to set the end frame here, we can go, we can bring this over here and then hit page down. Uh, you can also, if you're here, hit page up until you get to the end. And then control end will make the end frame wherever your playhead is. Um, although you can see there isn't anything there because we are actually on the next frame. So even though this is the technically where the, the strip ends, the frame always shows what's forward. So there's nothing after this strip so we see nothing so instead what i'm going to do is go back by hitting the left arrow once and then press Control end and then that will have the end frame be on the last frame of the video the strip here okay and an even easier way to do this is uh let's just bring this over here Control end to make let's say that's the end now uh now you can do it down here as well um you can click and drag that uh, same with the start frame and another way to set the start frame is control home so that sets the start frame but i want the start frame to be one but anyway an easier way to do that is select all of your strips that you want in your video come over to view range set frame range to strips easy as that and it actually does make it properly on the very end of the uh, strip like it's supposed to okay perfect so that is the blender defaults that's how you would normally edit but i don't know if you noticed anything that might be wrong with that or not wrong but just slow and um if you didn't notice what i was doing is i was moving my hands now i know you can't see my hands but i was moving my hands out of their position to different positions and in order to do that i had to look down so you probably saw me looking down quite a bit so I, my, my eyes are leaving the screen, going down, I'm trying to find the keys, and then I'm going back up. Now, it's not that slow, but over a long period of time, that can add up to a lot of time that's wasted. Oh, and I did forget to show you this. I'll just go ahead and show you. Now, this is uh, after you've cut your major initial cut, what I, co what I do is go back in and uh, make the tweaks. Um, so let's say I want to tweak this here. Control, click, and G to grab that. Make sure my playhead is over here. Press backspace. Uh, backspace won't work uh, if you um, have your playhead here. Backspace only works on the right. Everything on the right of the playhead. So backspace. Uh, and then I do page up. Just so I don't have to zoom out, I just hit zero. And that zeroes in on the playhead. And then I do do the same thing. Uh, and I'm again, I'm just this is arbitrary. I'm just showing you kind of what I would do to tweak stuff here. And then backspace. But you can see I'm kind of looking down a lot at my keys. Um, uh, page up, zero, and let's do this, and backspace, uh, page up, zero, and yeah. Okay, so that's how I would uh, do that. 
Okay, so I don't know if you saw that um, me looking down a lot, but I have adopted a philosophy of fingers for my video editing, and that is one position, one key. Okay, and basically it's the least amount of movement. Uh, the problem right now is that my hands have to move out of their original positions, crossing the keyboard or taking my hand off the mouse. Now that's one position, but the one key is you want to do your most repetitive tasks with just one click as much as possible. Now this isn't possible with everything, but with as much as possible, just one click. So that's why one position, one key. So let's change some initial shortcuts so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, disclaimer here, when you start changing Blender shortcuts, it could become inconsistent with the rest of Blender and it also might not work depending on how many keys are competing with that shortcut. So if you have one shortcut for several different keys, it could become a little bit confusing. And I don't know how Blender chooses to decide which one is priority over the other. But anyway, let's get started. I'm going to show you what I did in the quick tip video that I just made recently. So we're going to start there. And that is with our split strips. So hover your mouse where it says split, right click, change shortcut, and then it says press a key. So I'm going to press F because my left hand is on the left side of the keyboard and it's in resting position on the keyboard like I would be typing. So F is my index finger, so I'm going to use that. And then hold split, I'm going to right click and change that one to shift F. There we go. Okay, so the next one I'm going to change is transform, and then I'm going to swap slip strip contents and snap strips to the current frame. And that is because snap strips I use more often, but it's two keys. So shift S versus S. I don't slip the strip contents very often. If you do, maybe that's you want to keep it this way. But I'm going to switch them. So right click, change shortcut. This will be the shift S. And you can see now they're the same which Blender allows you to do, but it will only one of them will work. I'm curious to see which one is it is. So let's select this one and move this uh, shift S. OK, so that's the snap. So which means that the slip strips isn't going to work. So let's go ahead and change the next one here. Transform uh, right click change shortcut S for our snap. OK, so now our snap is just S. Okay. And then shift S will be slip. And you can see that's where the video is uh, moving inside of that strip. Okay, so let's go back to strip, transform, and uh, remove gaps. I'm going to change that to V. Okay, so that's pretty good for now. Let's go ahead and test that out. So Alt O to clear that offset. Uh, let's go back to the beginning and let's test out our snap. So just S. Okay, there we go. And let's go back here and control end just to adjust our end frame. Okay, so same thing here. Let's come before the collapse and F to cut. Control select these and move our playhead. S to snap. F to cut. S to snap. And remember, mouse needs to be on the right of the playhead. F to cut. S to snap, F to cut, and S to snap, and S to snap. Okay, and then take these, delete with X, go back V to remove those gaps, and then we can just select all of them with A, range, set frame range to strips. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't have to look down except for the ones I haven't changed yet. So that's already sped up our workflow quite a bit. So let's do it again. Let's go back to view, uh, navigation, and jump to previous strip and jump to next strip. Like I said, that was page up and then page down. And actually for me, um, my page up and page down are right next to each other. Uh, I know there's a lot of like one on top of each other, page up and page down, but uh, mine weren't right next to each other. And page up is actually the left one and page down is the right one. So it's the opposite direction that this is going. So what I originally did was just swapped them. So my page up was to the right, which is normally to the left. And my page down, um, I switched to the right so that it was more of a physical thing. Like I'm pushing the right button, so it goes to the right. But that means I do have to take my hand off of the mouse to do that. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to change it to something else. I'm going to do 
Uh, for previous strip, right click, change shortcut, Shift X. And for next strip, I'm going to change this to Shift C. So now X and C are right next to each other. X is to the left, C is to the right, and uh, I don't have to move my hands at all. So Shift C and Shift X. And this is really useful uh, when you're trying to edit you know, really fast. Again, now I can do this without even looking down at my keyboard, which is the point. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to change the range, the set, start, and end frame. So we have control home and control end like you've seen, but I'm going to actually change them to the brackets because right now what the brackets do is select everything to the right or to the left of the playhead. Right bracket selects everything to the right, left bracket everything to the left. Now this is actually really good and normally I wouldn't need to change this, but the reason I am is because we already have something that will do this, and that is control clicking. I can control click on either side of the playhead and it will select everything on that side. So if we go up, control click here, control click here, you can see, which means I can change the brackets to whatever I want. So let's go to the range and set the start frame. I'm going to change that to left bracket and end frame to the right bracket. And now, real quick, easy. Now, I do have to change the position for this. Like I said, you can't have all of the keyboard shortcuts be where you never change position, but at least it's now one instead of two buttons. So I'm optimizing it still. And they make sense because they're brackets. So the right one is the start frame. The left one is the end frame. So here we go. Home. Or maybe I'll go down this way and then home, and then go up and end. Now that's a slow way of doing that because I could just you know, select these and then come up here, uh, range set frame range to strips like that. But if you notice that doesn't have any shortcut. So let's change that. So right click, assign shortcut, shift, alt, s. Now that's three shortcuts, but I, I'm not going to use this very much. So if you use it more often, you might want to change it to something different. So here we go, Shift Alt S, and I do have to look down for this one, unfortunately, but it's not a lot of movement with my hand, so it's okay. Uh, or select all. Oh, look at that, I didn't have to look down at all. <laughs> okay, what else? Let's see, I think there's one other thing that I want to do here, and that is the refresh all. So refresh all, it's control R right now. Nope, just gonna change that to R. Very quick, R, I don't have to do a double button there. So now we're getting somewhere, now we're really starting to optimize our workflow. But there are some things that we cannot change with the menus because they're not listed in the menus. And one of them is the movement of the playhead. Now, the movement of the playhead is actually fairly easy, you know, just clicking up here in this bar, but it can be even easier. And that is with our right click. Right now, our right click is our context menu, but our shift right click is changing the playhead position. So what I'm gonna do is just switch those. Now to do this, what we need to do is open up our preferences. And I'm gonna open up our preferences in this window here. So if you have this window open, you can change this to the preferences. If you don't have that window open, you can click and drag in a corner and open up another window and then change that to the preferences. But I've got this one, I'm just gonna pull this all the way over here. And the very first thing I'm gonna do, actually I probably should have said this a while back, but we don't want to save our preferences automatically. So go to preferences, uncheck auto save preferences, and you should see a button here that says save preferences followed by an asterisk. The asterisk means you have not saved anything yet, which is good. I don't want to. And the reason is it's a bit of a bug with Blender when you're creating your own key map. Because what you want to be able to do is switch back and forth between key maps here. I'll show you. Key map. Here's your key maps. This is Blender. We got Blender, Blender 2.7 series, and then we have industry compatible with things like Maya, 3ds Max, things like that. But they're all separate. Now I'll go over this more in a little bit, but when you make your own key configuration, it kind of, it's a little wonky. So instead we'll be exporting our key map and then re-importing it, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, let's change some more shortcuts. So this took me forever to find, but you can actually come up here, make sure you click name and you can search and if you type in change frame, 
enter. And then here is your filter for anything that says change frame and the different editors. You can scroll down to sequencer tool select. Now you have two selects, that's why we have to pull this out quite a bit. But one says select box. And for some reason, I don't know why, select box is the one you need. You can see this is shift right mouse, that's what this is. So I'm gonna click here, it says press a key, I'm gonna do right mouse, okay? And let's see if that works. Okay, so that is working now. But now we have to get our context menu back. So go back up here, you can type in sequencer context. Okay, sequencer context menu, right mouse, we're gonna change that to shift right mouse, okay? So right mouse, shift right mouse, there you go. Context menu is back. And it's as easy as that. And you can see we have this little restore button that we can click to get that back to the default. Um, you can also uh, just click this button. It's the same. I don't know why they have two restore buttons, but maybe one is more obvious. I don't know. Uh, don't click the X, though, because that I think that will completely remove that item. And I don't know how to get it back. So, well, I kind of do. I kind of do. But um, And that's the thing, actually. If you royally screw something up don't worry i will show you at the end of the video how you can get back to the default settings so don't worry um okay so there we go so now what we can do is come here and if i select these cut with f why is that not working okay oh i see so <laughs> this is what i mean by it being a, a bit wonky since i uh clicked restore i think it actually restored everything that I did. So I'll be back. I'm going to go quick change all of those back and then we'll continue. Okay, I think I'm back to the way that I had it before. So that is good. Um, okay, we need to change. Oh, I need to get our context menu back. That is this one. Shift right click. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, so now let's try this. We've got F to cut and then S to snap. V. Okay. Yeah, and this is really nice because now I don't have to go up and down, back and forth between this top bar and the strips. And again, it's not that long to do that back and forth, but when you're working with a huge project uh, and you're working with stuff down here and up here and over here, it's just another area you have to bounce off of. So if you can just edit right here, just a lot more optimized. Okay, so let's go even further. Okay, selection. So selecting, just regular select, selects one strip, and then control will select all the, one, the ones that are the same frames and same length. Same thing with the handles. But to make this faster, I'm gonna make just a single select, select both of them. So let's go to, you can type sequencer dot select here and that's actually the value and what i mean by that is if we come in here to our left mouse is the select let's follow that over here and open the drop down and you can see that here's the value sequencer dot select okay so now we have these options here uh with left mouse button press the left mouse and then we can actually change any of these so we can add a shift to that so shift left mouse uh control and uh, a whole bunch of other things here too so I like this here, this deselect on nothing, that's good. But if you uncheck that, then if you click around uh, on nothing, it's not going to de deselect that. But I really like that because it works like most other programs work. But what you can also do is select this linked time, and that's all you have to do. And now watch this. Select. Oh, look at that. It selects both of them at the same time. Same thing with our handles. And this is awesome for just moving stuff around, as you can see. Um, now I don't have to control click, I don't have to shift select, I don't have to box select, I can just straight away drag these to the positions that I want these to be. And that is super, super helpful to speed up your process. This has just been a lifesaver for me. Now, let's say you only want to select one of them, which happens a lot, then you can actually already by default just shift select. So shift select will select multiple, but also just single. You do have to click to deselect before you select something else. Otherwise you're gonna, again, multiple select. But 
that's what I do. Or if you select two of them, you can shift select to deselect one of them. So shift select. It also changes the active selection. So the white box is the active selection. So let's select. So you can see that's just cycling through. So if something is already the active selection, you can deselect it. But if it's not the active selection, but it is a selection, it will make it the active selection. So if you want to deselect this one, for example, you have to click it twice. So that is a little bit of a liability, and I haven't really dived into how to optimize that. You might want to test out your own shortcuts to optimize that. Okay, so another thing that is not on here is the unhide strips. Now, hide strips is on here, and that's um, H to hide. But watch what happens if I come up here and I type hide. Okay, hide. Let's go scroll, find our sequencer. Oh, look at that. We can't find our sequencer hide now you see this here clip editor it's h to hide tracks okay so you might think okay well h and then shift h will unhide it so let's try shift h oh, oh nope that hides all of the tracks okay uh hide tracks clear alt h okay alt h okay so that looks like that works alt h but this is not actually the one that you want to change. So for example, if I want to change Alt H, let's just say T. Now if I come here and I want to, okay, hide it and then unhide it with T. Oh, look at that. That doesn't do anything because this is not the clip editor. So that's not going to do us any good. <laughs> I'm not going to restore it because if I restore it, I'm probably going to lose everything again. So let's uh, uh, just, what was this? Uh, Alt H. Okay. So what you can do if you know the shortcut, but you actually don't know what the name of it is called, you can actually come up here and instead of clicking name, click key binding. And now we can type in H, enter. And now we can see if we can find the sequencer. Aha, sequencer. Okay, so H, Shift H and Alt H are hiding the strips, but it's not called hiding the strips, it's called muting the strips. So I hope this is one of the things that they actually change to make more consistent, but it's called mute strips. So mute strips here, we've got H and then Alt H, which is the same as we did before. But the reason I have to change it here is because if we come to strip and we come up here to lock mute, we can do mute strips here and then unmute strips. So I could right click and change this to H. And so originally I tried this and I thought, oh, maybe I could do like a toggle. Well, this doesn't work as a toggle. It only works with one of them. And I don't know which one Blender chooses, but if I press H, okay, so it hides. But if I press H again, it doesn't unhide it. So this is not a toggle, toggleable thing. But what I can do, so now we've changed it. So you can see this H is here, this unmute strips. So let's open the drop down. And then instead of just a regular H, I can come to this drop down and choose double click. Now this is double H. So I can press H twice really fast and that's unhide. So hide, unhide. That's really easy. And it is a little bit of a stretch for that index finger, but it's generally something I don't have to look down to see. So it's my hand isn't really changing positions. So it still matches my philosophy of fingers. Now, let's see, I got a couple more we can change and then we should be done and ready to export. Okay, um, so we've got hide, uh, oh, remove all gaps. So we have remove gaps here, but we don't have remove all gaps. And so we got insert gaps, which I've never really needed to do. I want to remove all gaps at the same time, which currently is shift backspace. Um, oh yeah, and of course I have to be uh, at the beginning, shift backspace. Um, but now we can just kind of drag these out here, you can see. Now, um, what I want to do is, uh, actually, let's just search the key binding here. So control, and it's just CTRL, and then space. I'm going to start typing backspace. I'll just say insert. Um, ooh, console text eyedropper. Oh, it's not control backspace. I'm sorry. This is shift backspace. Shift. There we go. Sequencer, remove gaps. Here we go. So since we have regular remove one gap as V, I'm going to make this shift V. And then you can see it disappears because it's no longer this key binding. <laughs> so uh, now if we go back to name and that was remove gaps, 
Now you can see our remove gaps has changed to shift V, which we can test down here. Shift V, boom, there we go. And then select all, control shift S, set our frame range. Okay, so only two left to change, I think, and that is the shift left and right arrows, which goes to the beginning and the end of the frame ranges. So right now I have to move my right hand out of position to hit the arrows. So let's change that. So uh, it's not in the menu, so I have to change it up here. What is, I think it's jump to start frame. Yeah, let's try that. Jump, jump. Ah, it's actually jump to end point. I remember being confused at this. So sometimes you have jump to strip, jump to frame, uh, but it's actually jump to end point. Okay, so shift right arrow, that is gonna be shift E. And then this one, I'll do shift W. So shift W will be to the left, which is the beginning. Shift E will be to the right, which is the end. So shift E, yeah, there we go. And that way I can go to the beginning and the end of the frame ranges without moving my hand position. And there we have it. We have all of the shortcut changes that I use for optimal video editing. And now we need to export our key map. So come up here to export and then just change this to really fast cut or whatever you want to save it as. Enter and of course make sure you're saving it in the directory that you want to save it as export key configuration. And now what we want to do before we do anything else is come up to preferences and revert to saved preferences. We don't want to click save preferences because we don't want to save these. If we save these now, we'll save it under the blender stuff and we don't want that. We want to revert to saved preferences. Boom. And now we're back to the defaults, but we want, we don't want our defaults. We want to import what we just exported really fast cut double click and now you can see oh yeah we're back to all of our beautifully made video optimized speed video editing shortcuts that was a really long-winded way of saying that which is what i usually do um but anyway so now we have the option to switch back to the blender ones which are the defaults so we haven't lost those uh, and we can go back to our fast cut and this is really, really helpful if you're doing Blender stuff like 3D modeling or compositing or anything else in the Blender sphere, we want to use the Blender shortcuts. No problem. And then when we come to our video editing, we're like, okay, defaults aren't good enough. We need our really fast cut. And then we can uh, cut those and so something I forgot to do when I originally recorded this was to show you all of my shortcut changes uh, with the whole strip again. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna select these and clear that offset, S to snap, press home to zoom out a little bit and just a little bit more. And then with both of them still selected, shift alt S to set that frame range. Okay, uh, I also don't need this panel over here. I'm gonna close it with N and that gives us a little bit more room. And let's just adjust this. Okay, so the challenge is to edit this without looking down at my keyboard as much as I can, and it should be easier with all of the shortcut changes. So let's go. Okay, F to cut, select, S to snap. F to cut, S to snap. And you can watch my eyes as I'm doing this. If you want, I'm not gonna cut this part out. We're just gonna do as much as I can, select these, X to, uh, delete, and then Shift W, Shift V, A, and what was it? Shift Alt S, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I didn't look down at my keyboard at all for that, but um, I had the problem uh, at the end. But once you get used to it, it'll get repetitive and it will really speed up your workflow. I hope you can kind of see that already. And then you can come in here and we can also tweak this like this, just however we want. And then let's go here. I'm trying my best not to look down. Uh, let's see, that's a V and then shift C zero. Um, for, with my uh, keyboard, I can actually press zero on the numpad without looking down. Um, 
because uh, it's right next to where my mouse is. So, okay, so C and then zero up here like this. Okay, let's go home. So zoom out, A, Shift, Alt, S. All right, so there you go. Okay, so before I wrap up, I want to cover a couple more things. If you want to make changes to your key map here, uh, what you're going to have to do is make your changes, export, and then revert to your save preferences, and then import again. So basically just do the exact same thing over again. Or if you only have to change a couple of them, then what I would suggest is, so for example, let's say the jump to endpoint, uh, we can change these just to something. Uh, make sure you're on your really fast cut, click it and change it to what you want. And then come up here and click this button here, which we didn't do to start with because it would have messed everything up and I'll show you why. So I'm just gonna give this the exact same name, really fast cut, enter, enter. And basically what that does is overwrite this. So now we have this. But what happens when you create a new custom key map, if you switch back to Blender, so it copies your changes to all of the key maps, which I think, in my opinion, is a bug. I, it, the, the whole purpose of creating a key map is so it can be separate. And I actually have put in a bug tracker on the developer site, so um, I don't know what they're going to decide with that, but we'll see. But what we can do is come back to the Blender one and click Restore, and that will restore all of the Blender ones, and it will restore the really fast cut, but with our new updates. So, changed, and then there you go. And I just noticed that I don't have the shortcut keys up here anymore. I'm not entirely sure when those stopped. <laughs> So I do apologize, but basically that's, we're done with the cutting. I want to show you if you royally screw things up, you don't have to worry. Um, just go to your Blender settings folder. And this is going to be, if you're working in Windows, this is typically going to be your C users, username, app data, roaming, Blender foundation, Blender. And I'll put a little text here so you can see. And that's what this folder is here. And you can see uh, I've got quite a few versions of Blender and some of them I've renamed. Uh, but the ones that are not renamed, those are the ones that are currently being used. So this is 2.92 here. Let's just go in. And this is cool because you can see all your configurations. So your user preferences, your recent files, bookmarks, and all of that good stuff. Um, but we want to focus on scripts, presets, and here's your key configuration. Now you can go in here and you can see our really fast cut. Um, I could rename this or I could delete it, but you can also just delete your key configuration, your whole key configuration, and then it will restore everything back to uh, the default key configurations. Uh, I don't like deleting it, anything if I don't have to, but I'm going to rename this to hold and then come back to Blender. I'm going to save this and I probably should have saved it first, but oh well, open recent 302, we're just going to reload it and you can see everything has gone away. So I have no really fast cut, everything is back to its default. So that's if you really screw things up, just navigate to that folder, get rid of those key configurations. If that doesn't work, then the last thing that you can do is come up here, file, defaults, and load factory settings. And that will load all of the factory settings in all of Blender. It's probably the last resort, you don't wanna do that. I mean, but it's if it's that, if it's between that or reformatting everything or uninstalling and reinstalling, Eh, you can try this first. So that was it. That was a very long, detailed explanation on how to change your shortcuts for optimal speed video editing. Uh, but I did forewarn you that it was going to be de detailed. And I will put timestamps in the description so you can jump to the shortcuts that you want. I will also put a list of shortcut changes. And not only that, but I'll, let me show you this. This is cool. Um, I will show you and print somewhere these shortcuts changes, not only the shortcut changes, but I will give you all of the value names. So really you can just search these values and change those straight away without having to do a whole bunch of your own research there. Now I might make this as a cheat sheet and put it on my Gumroad as a free download where you can go and you can download a little cheat sheet, look in the description, uh, for that link to the Gumroad. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have it up by the time I, have this video up, 
Um, but I will do my best. Okay, so that is it. This video has gone long enough. I hope you stuck around for the whole thing. And I really do hope that it helps you speed up your video editing and make you more productive. So until the next time, happy editing.